So the story of the Southern Railway in Perth. How did it happen? Where did it all come from? How's it going? Firstly, why did rail get chosen rather than bus along this corridor? Well, you've got to go back to the original story in Perth of how in 1979 the state government closed down the Fremantle Railway as the first step towards closing the whole system. And at that stage, the first oil crisis had just happened and we organised the Friends of the Railway and, and got a, a huge public reaction that has set in motion a very uh, cathartic political process. So uh, the best thing a state government can do for a railway is to try and close it down, as far as I can see, because this really got us going. And uh, in 1983, uh, a Labor government came in and, and has basically run that as their agenda ever since. And it has had significant um, political clout. The uh, railway was brought back, but it's a pretty old diesel system, and so we had a series of decisions to make about electrification, uh, extensions uh, to the north and then to the south. And uh, in each case, there was uh, a political process. Uh, you'd have to say the transport planners didn't really want this. They always said anything a bus, uh, a train can do, a bus can do better and cheaper. And they're wrong. And the reality is we have shown that over and over again. But many of the transport planners still say it. They have a fetish about flexibility. And uh, when re in reality, what you need is s speed and capacity. The uh, Fremantle Railway then was expanded uh, and electrified, the whole system brought in, uh, and by 1992, the Northern Railway was built and there was enormous pressure to build a Southern Railway. At that point, we had bipartisan support. Both parties wanted to build the Southern Railway. There was a difference about the route, but uh, in essence, they realised that that corridor needed rail. Um, however, the difference was really about whether or not to go down the freeway into the, the city where there was already a busway. And uh, so it was essentially rail versus bus at that point and eventually uh, the rail won. We have a situation now where the Southern Railway has been built and we can, we can have a look at how it's going. The uh, patronage uh, exceeded all expectations. Now we did happen to open the railway just as the fuel crisis happened, the third major fuel crisis that is, but this one uh, was when oil went over $140 a barrel and, and it was a significant increase in fuel price. Uh, and across Australia, massive increases in the use of rail. This certainly helped uh, and the Southern Railway has now uh, expanded to capacity. It's carrying 50,000 passengers a day. The bus system in that corridor was carrying 16,000 passengers a day. So 24,000 a day have come uh, mostly from other, from cars. That's a significant step ahead in terms of public transport for a city like Perth. The uh, key to this is the speed and the capacity. The capacity incorporates the comfort levels. They're not uh, packed in like sardines for most of the time, apart from uh, uh, around uh, peak hour now when it is very full. But the, uh, it is a 600 uh, people train uh, comfortably, uh, six carriages, and it does 130 kilometres an hour. Um, maximum speed. There are only seven stops between Perth and Mandurah, a distance of nearly 80 kilometres, uh, so it can get a decent speed up. The um, uh, average speed is about 90 kilometres an hour. Most urban rail, uh, Melbourne for example, is around 30, so it is a significant uh, speed difference. It is a very modern rail where you have uh, the chance to go a lot faster than by car. Now that's a very significant advantage. The trip to Mandurah by car will take an hour ten, 
uh, in peak hour, maybe an hour and a half when it's crawling along um, by train, 48 minutes. So that's a, a, a very big incentive to use it. The uh, funding of this was a $1.6 billion project. It had to cross two rivers, so substantial bridging, um, bigger engineering work than the Northern Suburbs Railway, which was only 200 million, went 33 kilometres. This um, was a much bigger exercise. It had to tunnel under the city. Uh, that tunnel was considered to be impossible because uh, it wasn't proper rock, uh, but it was done. And now we have uh, it, it uh, working very well. $1.6 billion sounds a lot of money. Uh, it, uh, it disappeared in terms of our budget fairly quickly. In terms of its engineering and planning, it's been a, a great success. And in fact, it was paid off by the uh, uh, largesse of the mining boom, essentially meaning that uh, the West Australian government was able to put some of its money uh, back into the debt. And, and so the uh, railway is, has no, no longer got a uh, capital to pay off. The, um, that doesn't happen in a very straightforward way. Treasury, of course, would much prefer to not pay anything off. They would uh, just give tax relief, that kind of thing. Um, but in fact, the public was so behind this project that the politics of it meant that the, the government uh, were very keen to, to show uh, that they were doing the right thing and therefore paid it off. It's a, uh, a significant thing to have a, a modern railway system now without a debt. Now, the, uh, the railway is, is uh, part of a broader system. There's a very substantial increase in bus usage in that corridor as well as the railway because the bus links in uh, at each of these stations and uh, across the system you have now a, a bigger set of options for people and uh, the bus system and the rail system uh, all increased in the other corridors as soon as the Southern Railway began. So overall Perth has gone from 5% uh, on public transport uh, to 10% in a 10 year period. That doesn't sound a lot but in most European cities you don't get above 20% by public transport uh, but you have a very different city when you get to that point. Uh, and no American city has 10%, even New York is only 9%. So uh, we've done pretty well in that 10 year period and it does show what you can do with a modern city. Um, the key thing for the long term future and why I particularly like rail is that it does build up land use around stations. 